So welcome everybody. So we're here to talk about the results of the zoning review. Um, Keith Turner, Dr. Keith Turner, chaired this review, um, and their, their, this group's job was to look at the zoning decisions we'd made and go through the various appeals people had um, had brought in. So these are the zoning decisions on the flatland. Um, something like 1,300 people applied to Sarah to be included in the review. Um, the majority of those wanted to go from green to red, um, but 150 were red and they wanted to go green, but it's roughly 90-10. 90% of people wanted to, go, wanted to go red who'd been green. Um, we got about 20 applications which um, didn't make a whole lot of sense. People who wanted their, their you know, TC1 to TC2 changed or they didn't want to go, they were green and they wanted to go orange and some of those sorts of things. Um, and they came from across the city, from people that were in the areas that were you know, the, the Dallingtons and the eastern part of Christchurch, but we also had people from, you know, from Hornby and Islington where they, we really thought they had pretty, you know, very, few, very few land issues. So the number is 104 people are changing colour, three are going from red to green, and 101 are going from green to red. So last night um, we rang a lot of the people that were changing. Um, I helped with some of that phoning this morning as well. We're trying to ring all those people and tell them what's going on. Um, there's also, in fact, 35 people within that 100 and uh, 104 who actually are changing and they didn't actually apply for a change in zoning. So that's difficult because those people, in some cases, actually were quite happy being red and we're, and we're quite happy being green and we're now making them red. But the majority of people we've spoken to so far um, we're actually, we're actually um, we're, we're pleased. So we've got through most of the people that actually had actually applied, who, who are changing. Um, so all the property owners, all 1,300 and, and whatever, are getting a letter either today or tomorrow, but we've been ringing all the people who are changing. And we've also been ringing the people who we think were, if you like, most, the people who've had the most contact with. Over, over this last year, people we know who found it very stressful. So also ringing them last night, we actually, while it was us ringing them, we also had some councillors available, and we also had earthquake support coordinators ready to go out and talk to people if they felt that they needed some, some other support as well. So, you know, we're trying to be mindful. For a lot of people, it's been a really stressful time, and this, you know, this is a, another stressful, st uh, stressful period. So to be clear, EQC is currently sending out land damage information to people. Um, and people, you know, some people uh, thinking they're TC3, well, they're no longer going to be TC3, they're now going to be red. So some of the information they may be receiving from EQC is no longer going to be, is no going to be valid. Um, we're putting up the, um, all the decision stuff up on, onto the website. So the cabinet documents are putting put onto our, our website at the moment and they'll be up there, they're up there now or up there later on today. So they'll be up there and they'll be just up on the, on the CERA website. Um, I guess I'd also reflect, you know, last night I went to um, a public meeting, um, not about this, but to our people on the Port Hills who are white zone. And there, you know, one of the themes that just comes across is, you know, I think some people don't like the detail of what's happening. But for most people, they, they think that what the government has done in an overall sense has been really positive. They understand that in well, probably very few other countries in the world does the government do these sorts of things where they step up and buy people's land off them when a disaster like this strikes. So not everybody likes the detail, but they understand that in the overall picture, the government is trying to do the right thing. I think the other thing is, you know, people's desires are different. You know, nothing is, nothing is clearer than that than on the Port Hills, where people have a different risk appetite to one neighbour compared to another. Um, and the same on the flatland. We've seen here, for some people, they've been, they, they're happy to be where they are. For other people, they want to go. And we're never going to make all the people happy all the time. Um, of the 101 changing from green to red, 62 met, if you like, the, the straight land damage criteria set out by Cabinet. And these homes we spread across um, Bearwood, Dallington, Linwood and Avondale. 31 didn't strictly meet the criteria, but this group led by Keith Turner felt that they met the intent of the criteria. So the intent of the criteria was about the fact about complexities around um, ongoing 
issues around servicing them, keeping infrastructure going and those sorts of things. So there's some people who are going to be isolated as well, they're going to sort of just be in, a, in an island and was felt they should also change colour. So those homes, those 39 who didn't strictly meet just the pure geotech criteria, they're in parts of um, Burwood, New Brighton and Dallington. Uh, the cost of this for the Crown is about $19 million. I guess the other thing here is for some of the people that wanted to go from red to green, they've noted that their land damage wasn't actually as serious as some people who've gone red. And they're right, that's true in some cases. Our issue was that while their, their property isn't showing that land damage, that we think they're very susceptible to further damage in a future quake. Um, and we're really giving them, you know, we're making them an offer because we think if their house did burn down tomorrow, they'd find it very difficult to find an engineer who could build them a house again on that site because of their susceptibility to future damage. And that's difficult for some of these people because they actually don't see a whole lot of damage and they think that this is, it doesn't make sense to them. But we've been trying to talk to them today to try and explain, well, actually it's not about the damage you've got. In some cases, people are red because of the damage they've got. But for other people, it's about their openness to future damage because they're just, they're so open to it. And for some of them, they say, well, I've had 10,000 earthquakes, so I'm still OK. Well, the reality is, you know, we don't know whether the next one, if there is going to be a next one, isn't actually going to be do a lot of serious damage to their house, or to their land, and therefore to their house. Um, for the property owners who have had their zone changed from red to green, the Crown offer has been withdrawn. Um, I'm not aware of anybody who had bought the house off them, and they've gone from red to green. They're all, you know, hanging out not to actually sell us their house. And we'll send a formal letter to those people who've turned from red to green that we're withdrawing, we're withdrawing that offer. Um, for the 101 property owners that have gone red, um, the final settlement date for the Crown is uh, the 30th of April. Um, we've had good conversations with people about that today. Most people we've talked to, because we've been ringing these people, are happy with that. Um, but some of them are, you know, it's just saying, you know, I've got to think about what I'm going to do. But first, a lot of the people we spoke to, they're saying, well, I'm actually ready to go. I know where I'm going to go. This is really good news. Um, so, but for the people who weren't expecting a review, who didn't expect to be in there, then we're going to have to work with them to try and make sure they can actually meet that final settlement date of the 30th of April of next year. Um, overall, yeah. Um, that's all I have, actually. Happy to take, happy to take your questions. So you said it's Burwood, New Brighton and Dallington are the places where we've gone from grey to red. So not so green to red, that's right. Homes across Burwood, Dallington, Linwood and Avondale. Um, and then there were, yeah. Then there were also some homes that didn't strictly meet the criteria in, in, um, also in New Brighton and also back to Dallington as well. So New Brighton is the other area. What about the green to red area? The green to red? No. The, 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 red, the red to green. Um, Kaipoi, two in Kaipoi and one in New Brighton. And what's the reaction being from most people? The reaction from most people um, was actually really positive because you know most of the calls we've been done is people who they asked something to happen we've told them it's going to happen. I mean I was also ringing people who weren't going to be happy, people who I know have been really frustrated who wanted to change and have been just ringing our call centre regularly who I know have been really distressed. So they were, you know, they're pleased to hear it directly from us, not read it on the newspaper, but and they enjoyed having a conversation, just understanding about what the process we'd gone through, but they're still, you know, they're, those people are still frustrated. Um, but most of the people I was ringing were people actually who are red, who wanted to be green. What about the people that um, who have applied to get their land changed and the zoning's going to stay the same? How are they reacting to the news? Because this is what, less than 10%? Yeah, um, my, well, so, so, some of them are saying, well, I didn't expect anything, anything so different. Some of them are um, really disappointed and frustrated. Um, and we'll just have to continue to work with all those people in those communities to try and ensure the recovery happens you know, as quickly as we can. Is this the end of the road for them though? Now that the appeal process is, is exhausted, they have to essentially do what the decisions are in? Well, we think it's been a really thorough process. Um, you know, we've had a, a big brain, an independent person who's done a lot of hard, looked over a lot of hard geotech issues himself in the past. Um, he's had the, the, if you like, the benefit of a lot of geotech information. And some, in some cases had been able to look at more geotech information that was actually available when they initially made these zoning decisions. So we think the, 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 these decisions will, you know, are right. 
um, and it is pretty much the end of the road, yes. Was there some anger from some of those that weren't expecting their home to change? I wouldn't call it anger, I think there was just sort of, um, I think there was just a bit of um, surprise. Most of those people are in areas where they know they've been really, you know, active groups trying to get their, their land zoning changed. So for some of them it was like, oh, okay, well I kind of thought this, this, might be, this, this might be happening. But for other people, you know, they've got this house that they think is wonderful with these wonderful trees around it, and they go, well actually, I know it's pretty munted around here, but I'm happy. And that's, you know, that's just part of this whole land zoning stuff, you know, it's very hard making everybody happy all the time. Everybody's damage to their house are different, where they love the community is different. You know, you know I mean, you know, just being out and about in the last few days, you know, I was back at my old stomping ground of Ryan earlier in the week. You know, a number of people there have gone red. And some of them were saying, oh, Roger, I really weren't, wasn't happy when you re originally made me red, but actually I've moved on. One, of the woman, one woman was saying, actually, I've taken on a bigger mortgage than I had before, but I'm really looking forward to moving out, um, moving out to Hallsville. So for some people, they actually have gone, well, actually, this is actually for the better. Um, and, yeah, but it's, it's very difficult for a lot, a lot of these people, but everybody is different. So you had that feeling of acceptance from some of the people that you called, even though they weren't happy, but accepted? Some of the people were happy, but some of them weren't happy. And I think for some of them, it's still sinking in. And for some of them, it's just been so much uncertainty, I thought they, they, didn't, they weren't sure what they were wishing for either. Yeah. How difficult it is, has this been for um, Dr Turner and, and for the likes of yourself? So I mean, it wasn't really for me. Um, you know, Dr. Turner has worked uh, has worked you know without me over his shoulder, and I think he has found he has found it quite tricky. Um, yeah, I mean these these issues aren't necessarily particularly clear cut, and he's put a lot of thought in, and he's spent quite a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, th this this you know, there's no precedent for people doing this elsewhere in the world ever before. So you know, you start from from pretty much zero. So it is it is difficult. Uh, changes were not as a result of requests? 35. So 35 people didn't actually request it. So some of those people didn't request it because they were actually happy where they were. Where they were. Some people didn't request it because they were away. Some people didn't request it because they just couldn't be bothered. Yeah, but there are, there are some within that 35 who clearly were happy with, with, with the land zoning they had, Chris. Obviously there's been a lot of talk about Parklands and Parklands going to a re-exit, there's none in Parklands that have been... That's correct. Correct. There are none in Parklands or Brooklands. So both those areas, you know, a lot of, you know, I can't remember the numbers, but you know, quite a number of people had applied, and especially when it was kind of fresh in their, in their brains for the Parklands people. So a lot of them um, are, feeling, are feeling frustrated, but I think, you know, the Parklands decision being one of the last decisions was also, you know, it had been also carefully considered. Can you review that? Yeah, we did. I mean, originally they'd gone green. We, 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 we had our own internal process to, to check that following the December the 23rd quake. And then Keith, Keith Turner has also had another look at it as well. Yeah. I mean, the fundamental test is can these people rebuild on the land without, um, without if you like, big area-wide works? So in the areas, for example, in Brooklands, you know, you need to build large works to be able to bring the land up and that, and that is you know, big disruptive long periods of time. That's not the case in somewhere like Parklands. You know, we think they those that, that, that community can largely rebuild without, you know, big protective works. When we talk about these big protective works, it's not something built by the St Martin Scout Group over a you know a series of weekends. You know, this is there's serious civil engineering structures, you know, structures made out of rock and stone that might go down ten metres into the ground and be ten metres wide. So for those people, we think that is just take long and be and, and be and be difficult. Yeah. Apologies for arriving late, Roger. I missed it, but the number that went from green to red, 101. Do you have the breakdown of the, the numbers in each suburb? We can get you the breaks down by, by suburb Hamish, Yeah, I, I don't have that standing up here now. Yep. And the, the white zone, those in sorry, not white, <laughs> those on the Port Hills. What's their deadline for? So there's still um, 30. There's 37 places affected by rockfall on the Port Hills. Um, we've said the 14th of September is the date we want to get. We want to get through those, and we had a public meeting with them last night in a, um, in a, in a school hall in Heathcote to talk about that with them. And I thought that was actually a pretty good meeting. We, well, it was actually not in a school. It was what is that? It was actually in a church. I stood at the lectern. Very good. Any discussion on the Port Hills and Parklands? 
they also had an opportunity to appeal. So, so only didn't they as well? So, so, so there's no decision on the. So those people haven't had an opportunity to appeal their decision yet, and we're working through exactly what that appeal mechanism will be, um, and how, when it will be open and that sort of thing. So we would expect we would announce that very soon after we've made the final zoning decision for those people on the Port Hills on the 14th. Um, yeah. Does everyone, does everyone know all of the thousand of? So, so we've been ringing the ones we think are, who we think, hear my language, you know, who we think actually are the most desperate to hear. Um, we've got details, um, but for the others, where we don't have details, we're writing to them and those letters will, should be with them today or tomorrow. I don't have that number. Sorry? We've, we've, we've got through about 100 of them so far, so most of them we haven't actually, we haven't actually been able to ring. Well, sounds like we're all done then. Thank you very much, and um, we'll be starting on time next time as well, I promise you, Hamish. <laughs>